you're welcome. And thank you for your time, you know, being the reviewers for the scholarship. My name is Hai from the research office. And uh, I would like to walk you through some notable results for consideration from the scholarship data. So this is just a condensed version of the many analysis that we have done. So if you're ever interested in more data, more research, please contact us, the research office at MESA. My objective today is to, I got two objectives today. The first is the why of this work. And second is the good and the not yet good. So let's jump right into the first one, the why. Now this will be the good reminder for those who work at Mesa and for our external friends. I think it will be helpful and, and interesting for you to know about the why of our work too. So the American Council on Education, they say that diversity comes with a host of benefits at all levels of education and in the workforce. The current and future health of our nation requires everyone to have equitable access to sources of opportunity. And of course, we all know that higher education is a very major source of opportunity. Now, the last sentence here is, is important. It is therefore imperative that educators, policymakers, community leaders, the media, and others have access to the timely data on one of the most salient predictors of higher education access and success in this country, race, and ethnicities. So a lot of what you're about to see will be at the ethnicity level. It is important for higher education. And you can even say that important for our nation. And it's also important for MESA because we are the leading college of equity and excellence. So one of the first questions you may have is what do students use the scholarship for? This is from the uh, 2021 scholarship results. And the most common purpose at 80% was for tuition and books, followed by basic expenses, food and housing, family and overall expenses, work less so that they can focus more on school and keep me from dropping out. The last one is important though. This indicate that 31% of these may drop out without the scholarship. Think about that, 31%. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we will exaggerate, exaggerate the, the data by ethnicity. So let's take a deeper look. African-American is blue, Asian is orange, Latinx is uh, gray and white is yellow. And feel free to pause the video to you know, study the chart in more detail and, and, and on the slide too. Here I am going to highlight a few details. Look at the first one. Use the scholarship to pay for tuition. Asian with the highest at 96%. Support my family. I'm sorry. Cover basic expenses. The highest four were Latinx and Y right here. Support my family with overall expenses. That will be Asian. Work less so that I can keep focus more, keep more focused on school. The highest is African American and Latinx compared to other ethnicity. And then keep me from dropping out. Once again, we see that African American and Latinx are the two highest. And once again, I want to draw your attention to, to, to this, this dropping out idea and, and then the metric and that think about how much a scholarship are having these students. It even higher than the earlier number that we have seen, 43% and 40, 41%. And look at white, 14%. Now, if I may make an extension to this data, that is, this data makes sense in the light of our degree confer dashboard, which I'm gonna show you very briefly. And again, if you are reviewers, you may not have to worry about this. This is just extra information. So this is our degrees and certificates were in the last five or six years. And looking at the equity gap in here, why are doing the best? The gap in Latinx, the gap in African-American, notice the red bar right here versus white. 
So once again, as we come back to this graph, we see that this is important. Look at the scholarship are helping the student from dropping out. So overall, the, the, the number one purpose is to pay for tuition book. And a very important takeaway is that different students from different backgrounds are using a scholarship for slightly different purpose, but overall, the, high, the most common one is pay for tuition book. And then also keeping students from dropping out. So the scholarship are helpful for student success. So what are the impact of the scholarship, you may ask? Here are some extra data also from the 2021 results. Uh, strongly agree is dark blue, agree is light blue, neutral is gray, disagree is orange, and strongly agree is like red is dark orange. So basically blue means good. And as you can see in here, overall is overwhelmingly blue mean overwhelmingly good. So on a scale of one to five, with five being strongly agree or good, the average is all above four, as you can see over here. So which means that in general, students said that the scholarship awards allow me to take advantage of opportunity that would have otherwise been unattainable. This make me feel more confident about who I am and the scholarship make it easier for me to achieve my academic goal. Make me feel more confident about my academic skill and then provide me with emotional support. So now we are seeing that the scholarship are making a positive impact in the student life. And guess what? At the scholarship reviewers, you have the, this, what is it, decision-making power in order to make a positive impact in their life. Now let's move on to the second part, the good and the not yet good. So special population refer to students that must overcome barriers in order to achieve their academic goals. So here's a list of special population that we have in Mesa starting from EOPS, promise, food insecure, all the way to disability and star trio and veteran and active duty military. Orange mean awardee, the people who receive a scholarship and blue mean applicants. So we're comparing the special population ratio between the two. And overall, with only a few exceptions, it appears that the awardees are more likely to identify as a special population compared to the applicants. So we are doing a great job in paying attention to the struggle and the difficulty of our students, according to this data. Now, an extension of special population is non-native language. It's the, uh, or the student whose English is not their first language. The assumption here is that the English language is the barrier for these non-native students. It's the good thing that show our improvement from 2019, the first time that we did this equity analysis that Asian students who indicate that English is not their native language were much less likely to receive an award. But then in 2021, there was a very high rate of non-native language among Asian students. So the implication here is that there was a lesser focus on traditional academic writing from the reviewers, which is the good thing. Now let's talk about money and let's talk about the number of awards. And again, there's lots and lots of number here and color. So feel free to pause and examine the data to your own interest. Now, the first table is the amount per awardee in different year by ethnicity with the average at the bottom. The second table is the how many awards or the number of awards received per each group, again, average at the bottom. And the last table is the amount per award. So I want to draw your attention to 2019 African-American noted the red bar right here. In 2019, African-American is the lowest, has the lowest amount per awardee right here. And also had the lowest uh, number of award received 1.3 compared to 1.6 on average, and look at this one again, $600 compared to the average of almost $1,000. And the same thing to over here, 
in terms of how much was each award, but for around five hundred dollar for each award the African American received in two thousand nineteen, and then all which also less than average. So they are the lowest in all three metrics. But looking at that, how that shifted in twenty one, in twenty and twenty one, for example, in twenty one, African American was the highest here compared to the average in every other group. And also the highest here in terms of the number of awards received on average and the second highest here at 692. So we know previously that these students are in greater need of help because they are more likely to face a greater barrier to higher education. So it is a good thing that we are giving more to these students on an equity lens. And you all deserve a big applause for that. So big yay. Now, let's talk about room for improvement a little bit. So still the four groups, African American, Asian, Latin, X and Y for each of the graph over here. Blue is awardees, orange is applicants, and gray is the campus. Three years of data by ethnicity. And we're looking at cumulated unit. Now, we are seeing that if you see the side of the blue bar, orange bar with a gray, we're seeing that with some rare instances in 2021, in terms of the unit, overall blue is always higher than orange, which is always higher than gray. It changed a little bit in 21, but the trend overall remains the same, which is really interesting. Why? Why is it that we're only rewarding the highest unit only? It should not be the case because it's not in any scholarship selection criteria to my understanding that students need to have the highest unit. But in reality, it is indeed the case here that we are awarding based on the highest possible unit. What are the indications of the highest unit here? I don't quite have an answer for that. And as a reviewer, if you have a theory on a potential explanation, please let me know, just email me. Now, same idea, similar graph structure like earlier, but we're looking at GPA instead. The same three groups are worthy, applicants, campus. And I think you notice a similar pattern too, right? So overall, with only a few exceptions, blue is higher than orange, is higher than gray. So once again, we are awarding very much on GPA across all ethnicity and over the years. So for example, in 21, the average GPA for awarding is 3.7, for applicant is 3.4, and for the campus is 2.9. No, this is nothing wrong with academic accomplishment. But in addition to that, at, 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 uh, at Mesa, in addition to rewarding academic accomplishment, we would like to also acknowledge students who may not have the highest accomplishments academically, but they are still considered exceptional in the sense that they have overcome and are facing challenges in order to study at Mesa. So think about the initial data slide that I showed earlier about what students use the scholarship for and what the money go for. So I would go further and argue that these students, the ones who have challenges in life, are going to benefit the most from the scholarship or receive the greatest impact from the scholarship because they have challenges in their life. So with that being said, I'd like to close with some takeaway. We have done so many great things and make big improvement over the years. That improvement in the amount per awardee, number of award received, the amount per award for African-American students. We are paying attention to the difficulties students are facing by giving more award to the special population. And they're also an indicator where we are paying less attention to the formal academic writing, which is a good thing. And then scholarship are helpful and meaningful for students.
Now, for some reason, students with higher unit are still more likely to receive a scholarship and students with higher GPA are still more likely to receive a scholarship. So we are already paying attention to the difficulty and challenges students are facing, but perhaps there's room for even more attention than that. And, and finally, definitely consider the impact of COVID because we know from data out there that it is disproportionately affects certain groups more than others. With that being said, that is the end of this video. I would like to say thank you so much for your time and your willingness to serve as the reviewers. And remember, you have the power to have students succeed. So thank you.